let's define a show parser, but before we do that, let's define a test for it. So our show parser is pretty straightforward. It will just work when um, when the when the keyword show appears and it will return an object of type show. So let's define a show parser and just say parse string and return just the show character okay as we as far we have what we were hoping for so we are parsing the show string but also we want to transform this into a particular data type representing the command because that's going to be very valuable when we come when the time comes to actually interpret the comments given by the user so if we transform this into a we don't even need to read the captured uh, string we can just return show dot new and there you go we have an instance of type show which is exactly what we wanted let's move on and define a parser for the evolve uh, command so this is the evolve parser we give it evolve 72 and it should return a an instance of evolve with 72 iterations we call it n is that correct yes correct okay cool let me also check that both set var and apply are also commands otherwise we're going to be in trouble later okay so the evolve parser will take evolve uh, 72 as a string and return an actual an actual data type a instance of the data type evolve uh, in this case i'm gonna duplicate the show parser so evaluate and again rely on the powerful macro do parse we are going to read the first string which is the keyword parse dot evolve evolve and this is just a keyword and then we'll have and you can see i'm actually discarding the value because if the uh, parser makes it to the next stage it means that the first word was indeed the keyword evolve and then we'll have a bunch of white spaces we don't care how many uh, but definitely at least one uh, there's no doubt about it so we could be a bit more restrictive and say hey you're going to have at least one white space and then we know that ws as we defined it uh, takes optional spaces this will make sure that people don't write something like evolve 72 all one word and that parses correctly because we were not keen in encouraging this this practice i guess as language uh, creators right so we then go on and capture the number of iterations so n will be parse.int and finally we'll return parse.constant and say give me evolve.new and then the number of iterations and sorry my bad this is evolve rather than evaluate evolve okay good success let's move on set var is the the next step so let me copy paste this test we have set var parser and this is where things get a bit more tricky and, and interesting right so we have the name of a variable like a or a1 and then a pattern no um, quotes just the pattern and this should turn into a var what was its name a set var set var object with the name a1 and with the pattern that we entered great and now let's try and define this more interesting parser and do parse again because we have a sequence of things that we want to uh, turn into a data type 
and in this case we'll uh, read the name of the variable luckily we have defined an auxiliary method to do so which is var parser so we'll do we'll do we'll capture the name of the variable thanks to var parser we'll then capture the column which we want to discard and let's say we're not going to be permissive any, of any white space so in this case we'll just say pars dot char column and maybe we can even force the space following the the, the column so we can say string column space up to you then we have a number of white spaces and then the actual pattern so pattern and again we have a nice and easy uh, pattern parser defined up there so we can do pattern parser that will capture the part the parser the, the the pattern and now you can see how even something that we thought might be a bit complicated like um, parsing a fairly com uh, complex uh, composed expression like a colon and then a uh, pattern becomes fairly straightforward right and this becomes a set our object where the name is name and the pattern is pattern let's try and compile this as easy as this we are good to go to the next step so pretty impressive right well uh, give you a couple of seconds to just realize how amazing this is okay we have one more uh, parser to define before combining every every single parser together and that's the applied parser so the applied parser takes a string like uh, where, where we have some coordinates like 122 and then uh, left arrow and then the actual pattern and we have we want two of these one will be the one where we just have the pattern itself and then we want another one where we have a variable name for example a1 or a2 it doesn't matter and this is an apply this is an apply function uh, apply object where the coordinates are, are the same I can change them to make things a bit more interesting and then there's a nice pattern or the name of a variable okay let's see how we can implement apply parser apply parser and again we're going to rely on the powerful do parse the first thing we want to capture is a set of coordinates this is easy for us because we've already defined the chord parser up there so that's the easy part and we know that there's some flexibility so if there's a random number of spaces between the two coordinates nothing should break once we have collected the coordinate we want to actually um, capture and discard the space and then uh, left arrow so in this case we'll assume there's a white space first optional and then an actual parse.string where we have the left arrow and we can either force the user to add a space or not we can make it optional to again give a bit more flexibility and after the left arrow we're gonna have what so after the left arrow we're gonna have either a variable name or a pattern how do we capture that let's say var or pattern and say this is either a var parser or a pattern parser and finally we'll return everything into this constant which is apply dot new and then the coordinates and the var or pattern okay we're gonna be building now we might see some errors but don't get discouraged because we're really really close to getting this uh, running uh, properly now when we try and, and run this we get a compilation error complaining about the fact that um, combining with an or 
a parser of var name with a parser of pattern is not uh, supported and that's perfectly fine and actually uh, is, is a, a good limitation to have the idea is that we'll always make sure that we want to only combine parsers where the underlying type so the type that gets uh, generated when we actually parse some input uh, are compatible between each other or, or in, in some sense belong to the same um, uh, data type um, hierarchy if you wish so what we need to do to make this work is to change the types of both the var parser and the pattern parser to be exactly the same because we um, so the easiest way to do that is to go up on the var parser and pattern parser and say do return for example var name but uh, return it uh, in a way where the compiler recognizes this as either a var name or a pattern which doesn't break uh, doesn't break any of our assumptions it just says whenever you parse um, don't be uh, overly precise at compile time on what uh, type of object you're going to get back this way both the var parser and the pattern parser are actually parsers of type var name or pattern so if we run this again uh, there's a concern that set var is not defined to understand um, name as either either a pattern or a var name and that's totally okay uh, we're back here so yeah there's some more some more changes we need to do if we go back to the uh, var parser when we run var parser as we said um, uh, as we because of the change we just made var parser is going to return either a var name or a pattern in this particular case we know it's a var name because um, because we know that we actually made var parser a bit uh, uh, return a type which is a bit more um, more general so what we can do with no with no danger is we can we can cast uh, the name as a var name rather than a pattern and we'll have to do the same for pattern so we, we know that when we when we run pattern parse we do get a parser of var name or pattern but um, we know that in this case we have a pattern in our hands and I'm sure there are uh, nicer ways of doing this but this is a straightforward way which is not not too hacky at all I would say because things are concise enough that the complexity of this um, cast can stay all in our we can wrap our head uh, our head around it so we can now parse um, both the apply methods properly you can see in one case we have the pattern and the other one in the other one we have a var name which is great there's only one step left for us to take care of and it's the one where we actually define an eyegold parser interactive game of life parser the eyegold parser is just a um, combination of all the parsers we've defined so far in the common parser uh, level so to make things more explicit this will be either a show parser or an evolve parser or a set var parser or an apply parser you can imagine this as being applied in a a cascading uh, fashion where the parser will try to parse an expression as a show comment if it fails then it will try to parse it as an evolve and so on and so forth up to apply and if none of the parser managed to actually generate a, 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 a common data type then the parsing uh, will have failed so we'll probably run into the same issue we saw um, a few seconds ago about the fact that we're trying to or on parsers of different types but let's see that uh, with our eyes before we start worrying about it so if I do eyeball parser now the eyeball parser should be able to understand all the expressions we defined here so I could actually go one step further and say take all of these expressions and let's turn each one of these into an eyeball parser mm, let me see the best way of doing that uh probably probably this okay if i do eyegold parser 
there we go so if i try and run this we're going to get some complaint because we're trying to combine a parser of show with a parser of evolve so the strategy here is to go up and say well each one of these uh, data classes are inheriting from common so the compiler will be okay with us um, marking this uh, new uh, show for example as a command we're just going one level up one level up in the uh, in the type hierarchy we'll do the same for evolve and we'll do the same for set bar and again for apply now each one of these parser actually is a parser of common there we go this is really it we've defined an eagle parser that uh, does the job for us the very last thing i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be trying to plug this parser into the REPL we built on the previous session in order to do that uh, i'll uh, go back to our REPL there we go build your own interactive dsl and then require the lib slash parser and now the functions we define in, in the parser are now visible so we can do is call eagle underscore parse parser dot parse input which of course is, is far from the actual behavior we want to see in our REPL uh, in the sense that we actually want to evaluate and, and change the state of our uh, game of life grid. But for the time being, because we only focus on the parser, what we want to see is that the expected, that, that the user input is matched to the right uh, common as expected. So if I, if I try and run this now, uh, and I clear, clear the screen of course we have some errors because the empty empty string is not understood by a parser and then I try to say a2 colon dot star dot dot and the parser interprets that as setting a variable to a particular pattern or I can try something like show and that's fine also generates a show object um, and I can try evolve 42 times and that gets translated into an evolve uh, object with the number of uh, iterations set to 42. Finally, I can try to set something, right? So we can use some coordinate like 0, 2, and then arrow and say, I want this particular pattern to be applied from 0, 2 to the right. And that's also working fine. You can see the number of uh, stars is the same uh, in, the, in the pattern, returning the object, which means we are doing the, uh, the right thing. And I'll try again with 45 and then some uh, some spaces because I was because I fell asleep while while typing and then try to assign this to a variable now mind that it doesn't matter that the variable we are assigning here exists because we're not evaluating the expression we're just parsing it so if I type s1 which you've never defined before we're just going to be returning uh, apply on um, 45 one the pattern that is uh, stored on var name s1 it's going to be up to the interpreter to actually let the user know that such a variable has not been defined before and so they have to go and uh, and fix the expression they passed to the to the rebel uh, this this is really it so i hope to i hope you um, enjoyed the show let me know what your thoughts are about uh, parser combinators make sure i have uh, I, I provide a comprehensive set of uh, uh, references so you can go and uh, do a deep dive into uh, some of the topics we only briefly touched on in the meantime uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you in a week time i think